We're in Hampstead Heath to look at a special pub. The Magdala behind me was involved in a very famous murder. This murder would see the finalisation, the end of female hangings in Britain. In the mid-1950s, Ruth Ellis would kill her lover here. Ruth herself lived a very troublesome life, but she also caused a lot of trouble for other people in her life. And this was the scene where she not only murdered her lover, but admitted it openly and demanded that the police be called on her. And when an officer turned up, she said, yes, I did it, I'm not confused about that. She had no qualms about what she did, but people have philosophized and wondered why she did it ever since. Now, when we're talking about Ruth Ellis, we have to really look into the situation properly. As a young girl and a young adult, she was abused by her father and watched her sister abused by her father. The truth is this would have deeply damaged Ruth. Ruth would eventually work in less than honorable trades. She would eventually in her teens start working in a club in Hampstead as a hostess. This would eventually divulge the darker things. Now, before things went badly wrong, she did marry and have a son. The son, whose name we know as Andy, it wasn't his actual name, it was an abbreviation of his middle name. Andy would have a very unfortunate future as well. And he watched his mother become a hostess in a nightclub and then gradually become a lady of the evening, making money from selling her wares to high-end clientele. Now, she also wasn't a particularly loyal person and her husband and partners would often feel she was playing truant, which is ironic considering the reason she would later kill her partner. Whilst being a cool girl, shall we say, and a hostess, she would meet David Blakely. David Blakely was a few years younger than her, he was a race car driver, and she started a relationship with him. Obviously, her son and her, her husband didn't seem to matter anymore. So, the, you know, later down the line, there's a lot of people that felt very bad for Ruth Ellis, but they don't really contextualize the bad that she did to others either. So she's now with this man, David, and they are in a very violent, toxic relationship violence ensues within the household and eventually she has to have a miscarriage because David punches her in the stomach whilst she is pregnant. Now I'm rushing all this and I'm only using a few names so you don't become confused. David uh, now starts a new relationship and so does she. They're both in new relationships but the Jealous nature of this particular woman was far too dangerous for David to avoid. I am, once again, I'm abbreviating this story. Come over here for me, please, cameraman, or just face this way for me, right? So, bear in mind now, Ruth is in a new relationship, which is hiding from David. David is in another relationship, which he's hiding, and now Ruth becomes suspicious of him and basically gets a taxi to his house. When he's not there, she notices his car driving off and she assumes, I know where he'll be going, he'll be going to the Magdala. She spots his car in the car park, which would have been here, waits outside, and when he comes out and tries to get in his car, she ambushes him with a revolver. Now, he tries to escape, where exactly he fell and was shot, I'm not entirely sure, but I can only imagine it would be somewhere here in this vicinity because he ran out of the car park and she has, she missed him on the first shot, but then struck him on the second. And as he's gone down, she stood over him and at point blank filled him full of holes a few more times. Like with other pubs, such as in central London or the blind beggar in the East End. Sometimes people will embellish the story for 
I don't know, interest or to bring about a bit of tourism. The people inside the pub, the locals and the bar staff decided it would be a humorous idea to drill a few fake holes into the building. So um, careful who you ask. I'm sure there's the odd tour guide that might tell you that's a real revolver round, but it's not. So I would, uh, I'd say well done for inventiveness, but we know a few other pubs where they've done this as well. Now, when it was time for Ruth to go to court, many people tried to get her a reprieve. She didn't want a reprieve. She wanted to be executed. This is why, among many reasons, people believed she was mentally unwell, but a few people from the medical industry, psychologists, psychiatrists, they couldn't find anything to excuse her as being mentally unwell. And she said to them, no, I'm fine. She knew what she was doing and she wanted to kill them. This led to a very easy decision of guilty, which means she had to be executed, which would happen at Holloway Prison. She would be the last of the hangings at Holloway Prison by Albert Pierpoint. Now, Albert, dare I say, is probably the most famous hangman executioner in modern times. You might not know who he is, but among certain historians or people that know, he is very famous and he killed hundreds of people. Hundreds. Um, now, he was also said to be a very likeable character outside of his profession, but that's another story. This, he himself, we could sit here talking about him all day, but it, it's not what it's about. He would have to kill Ruth Ellis. Now, he would later say that he didn't believe, now despite having killed loads of people, he would later say he didn't actually think that execution was a deterrent to crime. He thought that murder, which had happened forever, would go on forever, and there was no real deterrent which I think he's, he's probably right about. But after Ruth was hanged, the population become very emotive about it. And so it would lead to the end of female hangings altogether. Now, one thing that slightly bothers me about the fact that so many people tried to get Ruth Ellis off is they're not really looking at the situation. Her son, Andy would later, he was about, roughly about 10, when she came and shot her lover, David. Now, his life fell apart and he became somewhat insane. So if you're now young Andy, you've watched your mother ruin your father, your father commit suicide. You've watched your mother now go and murder her new lover, not thinking about you, your father or anything. You've just seen your whole life fall apart and her son Andy wound up killing himself after desecrating her grave. Her remains were at first buried in Holloway, but then they'd be moved and he would desecrate that grave. And then he ended his life. And she had, she had two children, um, and clearly didn't really care about either of them. She may have catered for them and looked after them, but clearly family bonds wasn't her priority. And this is why I'm slightly troubled by people trying to get her off because they're not thinking about the fact she was actually going around sleeping with whoever she wanted and then she decided to shoot someone. Um, now David was disgusting for assaulting her while she was pregnant. Unforgivable behaviour. Unforgivable behaviour. But does it mean that you're going to shoot him, have your own life taken so your family will never see you again and cause the issues which trickle down as a result of her actions. So Ruth Ellis is sometimes depicted as a bit of a hero figure, but deep down she was probably quite a nasty piece of work. After all, most people that kill in that fashion are. It certainly wasn't in cold blood, but I don't know if thinking someone's cheating on you or falling out with your partner is enough of a reason to gun them down in the street. That's just me though. Hopefully um, any females in my life think the same.